Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and security nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting May 13th, 2013. This week's episode covers a ton of software updates, two new interesting malware variants, and news of a big hacker group that has been sentenced in jail. It's the second week of the month, which means there's been a lot of security updates from various software vendors. Let's start with Microsoft Patch Day, which fell on the second Tuesday of the month. As usual, Microsoft released a bunch of patches fixing flaws in Windows, various Office packages, and Internet Explorer. I wrote about all of these updates on the WatchGuard Security Center blog, so I recommend you read about them there. But the most important update by far was the Internet Explorer update that fixed a zero-day flaw which attackers have been exploiting in the wild, including for the Department of Labor website attack which happened a few weeks ago. So go get that patch. Adobe also shares Patch Tuesday, and they released updates for Flash Player, Reader, and Cold Fusion, which I also wrote about on our blog. The big update here was the Cold Fusion update. This fixed a zero-day vulnerability, which attackers were leveraging to take over websites in the wild. So if you use Cold Fusion, be sure to patch it. On top of that, Apple released a big update for iTunes, fixing 41 security vulnerabilities. iTunes isn't really a very popular business application, but a lot of consumers use it. So if you do use iTunes, be sure to patch that as well. Finally, if you use Firefox, Mozilla released Firefox 21 as well as a Thunderbird update, which fixes eight security vulnerabilities, three of them which were critical and allowed remote attackers to uh, remotely execute code on your computer simply by you visiting a malicious website or a site with malicious code. So I recommend you check out that Firefox update. Uh, as an aside, the Firefox update also includes a new health report that keeps track of the security and stability of plugins you install in Firefox, so it's well worth an update. Next, let's talk about two interesting malware variants. The first is an interesting new piece of Mac malware which a researcher named Jacob Applebaum found during the Oslo Freedom Conference. Essentially, Jake found a piece of malware on the laptop of an Angolian uh, human rights campaigner, a new piece of malware that had infected this Mac laptop. Uh, the particular app was called Max.app. And this was a very interesting piece of malware in that it was actually signed with a legitimate Apple developer's ID. If you're interested in becoming an Apple developer, you have to sign up with them and get a specific ID. And there's a program on Apple computers called Gatekeeper that makes sure the code you run has been signed by a valid Apple developer. And apparently this malware author has gained access to this particular developer ID and used it in his malware. Now if you were infected by this malware, it would actually start every time you restarted your Mac program, and it would start taking screenshots of your Mac and send them via a command and control channel to the attacker. So this goes to show you that Macintosh computers can suffer from malware and network attacks as well. In fact, in this day and age, I highly recommend Macintosh users use antivirus or anti-malware products on their computer. You should also use gateway antivirus uh, at your perimeter using products like WatchGuard's XTM appliance. The second interesting malware story is a new variant of DorkBot discovered by Bitdefender, a antivirus company. Essentially, they saw a new variant of the DorkBot malware spreading via Facebook, specifically via Facebook's chat mechanism. Essentially, if this variant of DorkBot infected your computer, it could connect to your Facebook and start sending chat messages to your friends. These messages would contain a link which looked like it would link to a JPEG or image file, but in reality it was actually uh, linking to an EXE file which if you ran it or clicked on it would infect your computer as well. 
More interestingly, the attackers actually hosted the malware for this attack at a popular file locker called Mediafire. So it's interesting to see how these bad guys are using legitimate cloud resources to host their attack campaigns. In any case, if you see any unusual Facebook chat messages, especially ones linking to some weird image file, you should probably avoid them. You should also install host security products like antivirus on your computer, and more importantly, double up on it uh, by installing it on your gateway security appliance as well. The last big security story of the week is news that members from the group of LOLSEC have been sentenced and jailed. You probably remember LulzSec. They're a very popular hacking group that breached many, many different networks around 2011 and beyond. Uh, they did their hacks for the lols, or just for the fun of it, and were credited with some very, very big hacks, including ones that affected Sony customers and the CIA and many other ones beyond that. Anyways, four of the alleged members of uh, LulzSec were sentenced in the London court this week. Uh, the members were all from various uh, areas in Britain, whether it was was London or Scotland or whatever, and their ages varied from uh, mid-20s to upper 20s. In any case, they were all charged and now have been jailed because of their LulzSec hacking activities. To make a long story short, the sentences were anywhere from 20 months to two years and eight months. So not the, the longest jail sentences ever, but it's nice to see that some of these attackers are actually having to pay for the crime. In any case, there's no practical advice with this story. I just thought I'd share some good news. It's nice to see the authorities actually catching the bad guys some of the time. Well, that's it for another week of information security news. I hope you enjoyed this show. One bit of housekeeping, I will be attending OSCERT next week, so I may have to post my video either earlier or later than normal, but you can expect an on-the-road edition of our episode from the OSCERT show floor. If you'd like more regular security news, be sure to follow our blog, WatchGuard Security Center, and you can also follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.